Hi folks, in this video we talk about Boole's truth functionality. Previously we talked about the language of Boole and how there's two parts to it, the sentences and the connectives. And we said that the connectives in it, the Boolean connectives, are actually truth functional ones. In order to explain what that means, we have to add the next part to our system, the semantics. Remember we said that formal systems have three parts, a language, a semantics, and a proof theory? Well, this is, here's part number two, the semantics. The semantics has two components. It has truth values and then it has specific meanings of the symbols in the language. The truth values in, in Boole are just the true and the false. There are two truth values, so that's why it's called bivalent. Bi for two and valent for the values. What that means is every sentence of Boole has to be either true or false. No se sentence can have both truth values. No sentence can have neither truth value. And how do the sentences get truth values? Well, atomic sentences get their truth values that are either true or false, just dependent upon what they mean, what they encode. Like if Pia means Pia is guilty, then there's a fact about the world of whether she's guilty or not. Those little atoms refer to the ways the world are, and either the world is that way or it's not. So I, every, every atomic sentence is either true or it's false, just depending upon what the world is like. Now the connectives are different. The connectives are what we're gonna call truth functional. They don't, there's no fact of the matter that applies to the connective itself. Rather the connective, it gets a truth value depending upon what it's operating on. And here's, here's the truth functions uh, for these connectives. Uh, all right, let me back up because we have to talk about the concept of truth, functional, truth functionality even to talk about how this works with the Boolean connectives. So here's what it means for them to be truth functional. I'm gonna explain this concept, this bit of terminology that I've already started using. Truth functional uh, applies to complex sentences. And what it means is the, the truth value of the complex sentence is determined by or depends on just the truth values of the input sentences, like the atomic sentences. Another way to think about it, and this is really the exact same idea put in different terms, what if you're trying to know the truth value of the complex sentence or the output sentence? So the complex sentence and the output, those are the exact same things. If you didn't wanna know the value of that thing, what do you need to know? Do you only need to know the truth values of the input sentences or do you need to know more? If you only need to know the truth values of the input sentences, then it's truth functional. If you need to know more, like if you need to know uh, what those input sentences mean, what they're talking about in the world, if you need to know that other stuff, then it's not truth functional. Now that might seem really abstract, so let me explain it with an example. Here's an input sentence, A, and this is the complex sentence. It is true that A, so that's one output. Or here, I've got two more complex sentences. Here's a different connective, Ian believes that A. Um, this is a complex sentence. Uh, so it ha it's either true or false. Or here's a third complex sentence. It is not true that A. Now, what if I ask you, tell me which of these three sentences is true or false? And <clears throat> all you get to know though is the truth value of A. So I tell you A is actually true. Can you tell me whether this complex sentence is true? It is true that A. Well, the answer is yes, you can tell me it's true because it is true that A is, is true just in case A is true. Uh, similarly, think about the next one. It is not true that A. If I tell you A is true, is this complex sentence true or false? Can you know it? Yes, all you need to know is the truth value of A. If A is true, then the complex sentence is false because the, false, the complex sentence negates, it rejects the, that input sentence. So, so these two connectives in blue are truth functional. One of them is is a true, tr it is the truth function that just repeats the value of the input. The other is the truth function that negates or inverts the value of the input. But they're both truth functional because knowing the truth value of the input alone allows you to know the, the truth value of the output sentence. In the one case, it's true. And in the other case, it's false. Now, the contrast is with this, Ian believes that A. And what if, what if you know that A is true? Can you know whether Ian believes that A is true? The answer is no. I'm not omnipotent, or, uh, well, I'm not omnipotent. I'm not omniscient, though, that's what I wanna say. I don't know everything that's true. So just because A is true, it, you can't know whether Ian believes that or not. You have to know some other things. For example, you have to know what A means. Like, does A mean Alberto is guilty and maybe Alberto really is guilty? And whether Alberto is guilty or not is one thing. Whether Ian believes it is something else. So you have to know what A means, you have to know, uh, you also have to know something about my psychology and whether I happen to know that fact or not. 
So the truth value of this complex sentence is not determined just by the truth value of A, it's determined by other things in the world, like what I believe in or not, and uh, what A means, other things like that. So that's the basic concept of truth functionality. Is does just the truth value of the input matter, or does other stuff matter too, like facts about the world, facts about what A means, et cetera. Okay, I'm gonna give you some examples, um, and you have to tell me whether they're a truth functional or not. Um, Okay, you don't have to actually, I'll, I'll delete the, this version of the question. You don't have to actually count them up. I'm just gonna go through each of them in turn. Tell me exactly which ones are truth functional and which ones are not. Pause your videos now, because I really want you to think through this. This is an important concept. Okay, that was your last chance to pause your videos. Um, all right, let's consider the first one. Is negation dot dot dot, is negation truth functional? Yes. I've already told you the Boolean connectives are truth functional, and this is a Boolean connective. So, so this counts as a uh, correct answer. Pia, is this a truth functional connective? No, we said in the last video, this isn't even a connective. So how could it be a truth functional one? So no, this is not a truth functional connective. Pia believes that dot, dot, dot. Is this truth functional? No, I mean, Pia is no better than Ian. Uh, P is not uh, omniscient either, so you can't, this is not truth functional. Just knowing the truth value of the input does not tell you whether Pia believes it or not. Um, so how about the word likes? Is this a truth functional connective? Again, no, this is not a connective. It just even though it has some ellipses, it has gaps, you don't put whole sentences in there. So this is not a truth functional connective. Because, now this is a tough one. Remember, we said this is a connective, but because is actually not a truth functional connective. Uh, that this is one of the trickiest ones. So, so uh, just hold on for a minute, and I'll try to explain it in detail. Let me go through the rest of these really quickly. Or is is another one of our Boolean connectives. So, or is a truth functional connective, um, and is happy is not. Okay. So, what have I done for you here? The first thing I did is I crossed off all the ones that aren't even connectives. So, you can't be a truth functional connective if you're not a connective in the first place. But even though all these ones in black are connectives, some of them are truth functional and some of them are not. So this, the negation, the Boolean not is truth functional and or in English or in Bool is truth functional. But these two in blue are not truth functional. So there's only two correct answers there of all those. Let's talk about the two ones in blue in more detail because those are the trickiest. The Pia case is just like the Ian case. So this is the easiest one to make sense of. Uh, here's the truth, two plus two equals four. And Let's say Pia, does, Pia believes it, Pia knows some math. So that's a true input. And this output sentence is also true. Pia believes that two plus two equals four. Now here's a different truth though. Let's say the population of Singapore is like five and a half million people. Let's say Pia doesn't know anything about Singapore's population though. So this is true, but that doesn't mean Pia believes that it's true. Pia knows that fact. So the truth value of these two inputs is the same, but the truth values of the outputs is different. So it's not a truth function. The tr we, we need to know more. We need to know facts about what Pia believes and facts about the world to know um, this further information, the truth value of the output. So that's why the, this one is not truth functional, as, as not a truth functional connective, even though it is a connective. Now, trickiest of all of these is because. So let's look at that one in detail. Here's, here's some atomic sentences, P and Q. And here's my complex sentence, P because Q. And let's say I tell you P is true and Q is true. Can you tell me the output value? Is it true that P because Q? Well, hopefully if, if I state it in this clear of a guise, you can tell what the problem is. It, you have to know more than just the truth values. Not every truth is causally related to every truth in the world. Not everything causes everything. We need to know what caused what. We need to know what P and Q mean and what caused causal relations actually obtained in the world. Like here's some examples with, whole, with some true sentences. Let's say it's true that the fire started. And let's say it's also true that Calvin struck the match. And furthermore, let's say that those two events in the world are causally related. The fire started because Calvin struck the match. So here we have two true inputs and then the because sentence, the complex sentence is also true. But that doesn't mean that always happens. Here's two other true inputs. Two plus two equals four, that's a true sentence. It is sunny, uh, that is a true sentence right now. Uh, but that doesn't mean two plus two is four because it's sunny. Just because these two sentences are true doesn't mean that there's some causal relation obtaining between them. So because is not truth functional, 
is the ultimate lesson here. To know whether a because sentence is true, you need to know more than just the truth values of the inputs. You need to know what causal facts are obtaining in the world, what actually caused what. So all of this is to help you really understand through and through the concept of truth functionality. How we're going to apply this is we're going to look at truth functionality in Boole. And this is our entry into the concept of truth tables. If you're ever wondering what the heck truth tables are, just remember this. Truth tables work in Boole because Boole is truth functional. Truth tables allow us to stipulate the semantics of the Boolean connectives in a truth functional way. And that is wonderful because it allows us to do all sorts of powerful things with Boole. It will allow us to prove all sorts of arguments are valid or not valid just using um, the resources that Boole has at its disposal. So um, let, me let me explain how the truth functions work in Boole. These things over here on the left-hand side, the P column and the Q column, these are called the reference columns. And what we do is we use those values in the reference columns to compute or to, to define the values in the complex sentences over here. So if I wanted to say what the truth value of P and Q is, I want to fill out and say, when is that true or when is that false? In order to compute the truth value of that or define the truth value of that, I take all the atomic sentences that are in here and put them in their own columns. And the reference columns always have to go in alphabetical order. So it's really key that I did P first and Q second. If I had an R, P, Q, and R, R would have to go over here. I can't tack R out in the front because then I wouldn't preserve alphabetical order. Now, this not P only has one atomic sentence. So that's why I gave it its own table up here with just two rows. Now, the, not only is alphabetical order key, you also have to order the truth values in the, in the, um, in the um, uh, reference columns in the exact same way every time. This is called canonical order. Um, and this is really essential because um, if, if you could do this however you wanted, we wouldn't necessarily get the same values out here. And then we wouldn't, we, all communication would break down and this wouldn't work. So what's essential is that the reference columns contain every possible arrangement of values, every possible combination. If I just have one atomic, there's only two combinations. So I just list the true first and the false second. If I have two atomic sentences, there's four combinations. So I always start with all the trues as the top one and all the falses as the bottom one. Now, here's how the middle rows go. The first value that's closest to the complex sentences. So this is the atomic sentence that comes last in the alphabet, the one that's furthest to the right. That always alternates, true, false, true, false. So it doesn't matter that this is Q, the, the column always goes true, false, true, false like that. Just like, see, this column went true, false, because it's, it's the one furthest to the right. And then the one that comes second, or the next over to the left, always alternates in pairs, true, true, false, false. If I had a third column out here, I would alternate it in fours. It would go true, 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 and then I would need four more rows, false, 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 false. It would have eight rows. If I had, if I had four atomics, it would have 16 rows. So you can see how the pattern keeps building. And these truth tables allow me to define, these red, these red um, truth functions are definitional. This is the semantics of bool. This is what makes this symbol ampersand mean and, because when is and true? Just when P and Q are both true, that's when the complex sentence and is true. Otherwise, if either one is false, then the and is false. Or it's different. This is called the inclusive or, because if, if both inputs are true, the or is true. This is not like saying P or Q, but not both. This says P or Q, and, or this is like and or. Um, either one uh, can be true, and both can be true, and the or is still true. So my disjunction truth function is TTTF. Uh, it is the inclusive or. It's only false when the two inputs are false. Um, and negation, negation just reverses, it inverts the value of the input. So if P is true, then the not P is false. And if P is false, then the negation of P is true. Those are the truth functions of Boole. Um, and so that's how we're gonna use the concept of truth functionality now to do all sorts of great things. Okay, thanks.